Welcome to WAVE, Channel 20, Auburn Community Television in this episode of Meet the Artist. I'm Lucinda Laughlin, your host. Today we are in the beautiful foothills of the Sierra Nevadas. We are in front of Barbara Ann Chestnut's home, just south of Colfax. It is such an incredibly beautiful day. I think I could spend the entire day here. But unfortunately, or fortunately for you, we are filming an episode in Barbara Ann's studio. She has invited us into her studio to show us how she works with clay and makes one-of-a-kind ceramics. Let's go see if we can find Barbara Ann. I think her studio is this way. Hi, Barbara, we found you. Hey, welcome, Lucinda. Thank you so much for inviting us to your studio. I'm glad to have you. This is an absolute fabulous studio. So if you could just briefly tell us about the various locations you've created here. Ah, sure. Um, it's a new studio to me, so I'm really excited. It's double the size of what I used to have. So um, this is the main area for construction stuff. So this is where I make things. Then I have shelves to dry. Um, and then it goes in the kiln um, to fire the first time, the bisque fire. Then it goes back on the shelves, and then I go over to the other shelves for decorating. So, and then back in the kiln. <laughs> So you have some really definite defined areas and lots of room. Oh, it's wonderful. And the best thing is the lighting in here is absolutely fabulous. Um, when I moved in, it was just a garage. And um, so I had insulation put in, I had all these windows put in. And when, yeah, indoors, in the garage door, it's, yeah. I did wonderful. not. Oh, that was, that makes it fabulous. I, you know what? I think I would absolutely enjoy getting up every morning and coming down here to work. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so let's get started because you do work with clay mm -hmm. and you're going to give us demonstration. But yep. let's first look at some of the things that you actually have made okay. and then you can go take us through the steps in making them. Okay. So let's start out with these tall vases mm -hmm. and we can talk about them and this is what we're seeing is done, put on in the decorative process? Yes, when the clay is damp, then I can press into it and make impressions. And so you press into it the letters, mm -hmm. and you have some leaves that are on mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and all kinds of, you know, impressions. Once you get into texture on clay, then everything becomes texture. Now, one of the things that we should point out about the way that you work with clay, that you do not use a um, a wheel and throw clay that you actually have a different Don't. method. Yeah, no, um, I hand build everything. Um, I can throw, I have two wheels, I actually have three wheels, <laughs> but um, other people throw better and I hand built um, with children. I taught for 23 years and um, taught art and so hand building is what you can do with little kids and so in those 20 years, obviously, I got better because I was showing them. So, so this is done with the hand build process, which mm -hmm. we're going to see you. Mm -hmm. You're going to explain how to do today, as all of your things are hand yes. built. All yes. right. So let's look at some of the other. Looks like we have some small cups. Yeah. Oh, and I love you've got the peace <laughs> sign here. There you go. At least it's not the Mercedes Benz sign. There you go. I could. My son <laughs> works for them. Okay. <laughs> But no, uh, I so I carved this one, mm -hmm. um, this side. So some of the impression things I actually make, and then some I find. And so. this is done same with that handmade process yes, of yes. rolling. Yes, slab building. And yeah. then you come in and you're going to show us how you do the pressing, and then how you do the painting, and yeah. then glazing. Yeah, under glazing and then glazing. Okay, I'll get those terms right. It's okay. Those are absolutely fabulous, and I love the color that you have on the inside of this. Yeah, this one's plain. I know, <laughs> but I like the color. And then you also make cups. Yep. And this is kind of a signature cup for you, and it has a skull on the front. And so this yeah. isn't actually by pressing something in. It looks like something got pushed out. Right, right. So that actually is made with a mold. 
So this is actually a mold that would actually have another piece that you would pour clay into usually, and it would make this skull, right? I use it though as a press mold. I see. So I press clay down into it and then pick the clay back up. Oh, so that I was incorrect. So I thought you would be pushing this way. You are still uh, working no, I'm from... Yeah, I'm still pushing the clay down. Um, I, I mean, you can do it either way. That's a, And then you've also done a lot of the leaves again yeah, that you, we see yeah. quite often in your, your work. Yeah. Well, I, I know you have some of these that are in progress. I'm going to be really interested in watching how this starts with rolling and then when you get this final product. We can make one of those today. Maybe we'll make one of those today. This piece okay. is really unique, and you have so many different elements on it. And if you could just take it and explain what on earth is going on, because you have, like I said, different elements that you've done sure. to this. Let's grab this over here. So this is. Huh. <laughs> this is actually a plate mold. Uh, it's called a drape mold, so you lay the clay in like this, mm -hmm. right, and then stump, stamp it down so it fits real good and trim it up. And then you can texture it if you want and stuff. Um, but I made them and I simply stuck them the other way with a, a oh, band of clay in between. Mm -hmm. So it just became a more of a sculptural piece. So then how did you do the wings that are on each side? The wings actually um, were pressed onto a plastic uh, wing that came from one of my daughter's horses when she was a itty bitty. <laughs> and then a clock thing from a second grade teacher and another smaller skull mold. These things that are stuck on top or on the surface of the clay are called sprigging. Okay. Okay. And so I do sprigging and stamping and there you go. And everything is fair game in your house, it sounds like. Everything. <laughs> and your house, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're certainly welcome to come and pick and choose. <laughs> see, why don't we put this one over there, because I'm running out of room on my side. Sure. I also love these little trinket boxes. Yeah. I, at least that's what I would call it. I love things like this, because I have a tendency to take my jewelry off mm. when I'm watching TV. Mm -hmm. So this would be perfect right mm. beside my uh, at the couch. There you go. So again, this is the example of sprigging. It's called sprigging when you okay, put it on so the top. Yeah. And as you open it up, and here's again that fabulous color that you get on the inside. Color. I love the contrast that that brings to it. Yeah. And you have again some words, and that's something else we should talk about because you not only do your skull cups, you do cursing cups? Is that right? <laughs> it's, it's a line I call cussing on cups. <laughs> a cussing on cups. Um, it happened um, because uh, I think I was angry about um, my mom and dad being sick and um, going through that final stage of their lives and um, it was just an outlet. You know, it was kind of one of those things I don't think I can cuss on live <laughs> in this. So um, I saw a little um, meme, I guess you'd call it, and this little girl was stomping off, and she's go, I'm going to Neverland, but there's some four letter words in there. And I was like, this is exactly how I feel. And I know other people feel that way too. So. And you definitely can then get that coffee cup, and it's like, okay, this is my mood today. <laughs> oh yes, and there are several moods, yes. yes. All right, so then you also then, make these, what would you call these? I call them word tiles. Okay. Um, one of them is, you know, to use up your little scraps of clay. It's like, what do you do with these? So I could make Christmas ornaments, and I've thought about that. Oh, I could put holes, and I do on some. I put holes and hangers on some. Um, but they're just kind of like reminders to, mm -hmm. um, so I have friends who just put them around the house. And oh, I so love yeah. them. I love the idea of putting them on the Christmas tree. And this one says I'm, swagger. I'm swagger. Ooh. You need to keep some swagger. I think we all do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's start in how we do this because this is definitely a different process. Okay. All right. So um, they do me make machines that'll do this. I don't have one, and I kind of actually enjoy this process of hand rolling. So now you've already done some prep on the clay. 
Yeah, I, well, I just cut a piece and flattened it down a little bit so that I wouldn't have to work so hard with the rolling pin. Um, if you have a slab roller, you can put a really fat piece of clay in and it'll roll it down for you. But Now when you buy your clay, so do you buy it ready-made like that so it's just in this huge slab? Yeah, I buy clay. It comes in 25-pound um, bags, so I'll buy like 300, 600 pounds at a time. Mm -hmm. And then you just cut off what you figure yeah. that you're going to be needing? Yeah. All right, so show me how you do this. Here you go. So it's kind of like making pie crust. We talked about this. We have. <laughs> In fact, I sent you a picture of me you making did. pie crust. You did. I was getting ready. <laughs> so um, when I taught little kids, it's start in the middle, roll up, start in the middle, roll down, flip it over. So clay, I'm going to stretch the clay, but compress the clay at the same time. Okay. Okay. Clay likes compression. It's not so crazy about stretching. So you have to, when you're stretching it, you have to make sure you don't push too far it'll tear. Sounds just like pie okay. dough. There you go. So we're gonna... I love this, this big out. table you have. Yeah, it's um, it's new and I'm still kind of trying to figure it out. It's um, not quite as porous as my... I used to use a piece of canvas, um, but the canvas holds more dust. And so um, this gets damp a little faster so I have to move the clay around a bit. But um, if it gets too damp, does that mean it'll start sticking? Yeah. Now, what are the two, two sticks here for? That's just so that I don't get too thin, because clay, like paper, if it was too thin, it would tear. So I want this to be more like cardboard. If you're going to build something, you don't want to build it with paper. It'll be flimsy. You want to build it with cardboard, it will be stronger, right? Well, I think, too, it would make it well, so that you're more uniform. Exactly. And then if I want to make it thicker, then I could just use a thicker board, right? Um, to what would you be using the thicker ones for? Because you're making a mug today, correct? Yeah. So if I was making a larger piece, then I'd need thicker clay. Like a house is made of bricks. Bricks mm -hmm. are pretty hefty, right? So the, gotcha. you need a thicker thing. You must have very strong arm muscles to be fit when I'm old. Huh? I think so. <laughs> I tell you, this beats sitting at an easel. There you go. Okay, last time maybe. Now is there certain consistency that you're looking for here or just a uniform size and thickness? I'm just trying to go for uniform right now um, and then I'm going to cut it into shapes that I can build with. There we go. And then I can let the shapes dry. Mm -hmm. You can see I have some shapes drying already. And um, then yeah. I can assemble. So this drying process is actually necessary for you to go on to your next step. Depending how large the piece is and what shape it is, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Like I'm going to be baking some boxes later today, and so those have very straight, rigid sides. So I want this clay to get what we call leather hard. See, and that's almost there. It's kind of mm -hmm. like my belt. Yeah. And that it's a little I bit movable. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So I want it to stiffen up a little bit, but obviously I don't want it to get dry. So if it got too dry, I can spray it with water and reconstitute it a little bit, mm -hmm. get it wetter. Okay. All right. So, so what is our next step? Let's make a cup. Now, do you, is this one where you have something written on the back of it? I do. <laughs> These are the steps for when I get Alzheimer's. Um, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or for somebody like me that has no clue what you're well, supposed you to be go. doing. So first, I'm going to cut the shape. You know, and I used to tell my students, are you supposed to do this with a knife? No. Oh, well. <laughs> so, and I've uh, already beveled these edges. Now, this knife you're using looks like it's just an ordinary kitchen knife. It's a dollar store paring knife. You can buy a really nice Nolan clay knife. They're really nice. Mm -hmm. But the dollar store knife works fine, too. So, that's what I always love about all of these different things we can do. And the equipment, a lot of the equipment is just right there in our own homes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you don't have to. I mean, you can. You can buy really nice tools, but you don't have to. All right. So now this is going to be the bottom. This is the bottom. So that's the wall of the, of the cup. This is going to be the base or the bottom. 
Now, what is this? These are made of. Are they just a piece um, of wood? That's a piece of wood that a carpenter friend of mine uh, made for me. So it, it's a little sturdier. This is just cardboard, thick cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, you can see this is kind of given up. It's roundness <laughs> that never will. Now it so. looks like these actually has a beveled side to it as well. Yeah. And, that, and that's important. So that that's when I jo join it. I can do a little overlapping right there. It'll See. make the seam stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of butting it up against, that's not as strong as overlapping. I got it. Okay. Yeah. So those are my two shapes. Doesn't it always yeah. make you wonder is how the first person who decided to do something like this, how they worked it all out? Well, you know, oh, hey, I have a story about the history of clay. Do you? Sure. So they think, actually, women discovered about clay because um, back in the cave days, um, division of labor, so women were um, at home cooking mm -hmm. next to the river in the kitchen. <laughs> right. So they were um, next to the river, and they uh, maybe cleaned off last night's fire to build a new fire, and they found that the ground had turned hard. Oh. And they went, whoa, what's this? So they took some of that ground, and they think in the beginning they put it in baskets. And then they put the basket of dirt, fancy clay, or fancy dirt is clay, um, and put it in the fire, and that's how they got their first bowls. Mm -hmm. And then later they discovered they didn't need that basket. They could just pour Just do it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a little scrap, not big enough. I'm just going to recycle that. And you recycle it by putting it in a little bit of water, and then you've got a bag. Yeah. And then I can just uh, wedge that back up, kind of like kneading bread. Yes. And get the air out, mm -hmm. and then I can start over again. You don't waste anything. Try not to. All right, so what's <laughs> our next step? Okay, so we have our pieces. I'm going to cover this one so that it doesn't dry out too much. Now, if it did get too dry, though, that you could add some water to this and then kind of go through this whole process again. There you go. Gotcha. There you go. So I um, had cut these before. And you can see they're just about perfect for leather hard. Now, uh, no. Let's make a skull mug. Okay. Okay. So, so where am I going to be out grab of if you grab that skull thing, you're fine. Okay. Here we go. So this is my little skull mug. Ha, my contribution. <laughs> <laughs> so it says to make a small cup, you bevel cup the bevel cut the sides, condense the rim. Look, see, I almost forgot that part. What is condensing the rim? So I just with the part where you drink, I want that to be not so squared off. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna condense it with this roller paper okay. or wallpaper roller. So I'm just gonna condense that edge and then make sure that's straight. So you always have to follow the recipe. Well, I would always have to follow <laughs> the recipe. You could play. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to just put this down into here. Let's use this one. And get that down into there. So you are pressing into the press. Mm -hmm. I'm pressing into this mold, okay. just so that the clay gets the texture on the other side. And ta-da! There it is. So now we'll just make it round. Okay. So we'll grab a roller just to kind of help it out. And slip. Now, what is slip? Slip is clay, the clay I'm using, mm -hmm. and a little bit of water and a dash of vinegar. Now, some people, um, for years in college, all I used was water, plain straight water. Right. Um, either works. Some people just have preferences. So, what does the vinegar add to it? You know, I don't know. <laughs> but they say to add it, it works, okay. and so I do. <laughs> I should. You've given me something to research. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to score this. So this process is called scoring. Slip and score. Slip and score. So I'm going to roughen up the edges that are going to be joined together. 
kind of like you sand wood that's going to be joined I together. See, yeah. And then I'm going to slip it. It's amazing when I see this process and then see your finished product and you don't see this seam. Thank you. So you really do get it worked in there. Yeah. And that's part of it because of the way it's beveled and they join together. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then this, and then you do this. So that's really getting those um, two pieces of clay together. Mm -hmm. Just flatten out the edge. And you know, okay, he's not too deformed. A skull usually has I would deformity <laughs> to it. A skull should be the, um, usually I would do this while it's flat, but mm -hmm. I forgot. Okay. So I'm going to use this to support, and I'm going to add some of these um, little, um, these are woodblock things that come from Asia. They use them for stamping on fabric mm -hmm. off them, but they were great on clay. So we'll just add some of these. Now you also have some that have the letters, which is what yes. creates some of the words that yes. you put on your cups. Hold on, we have to be symmetrical here. Yeah, it makes it a little harder doing it this way. Yeah, mm, it's okay, it's working. We'll just call this Look. Lucinda's cup. Ooh! <laughs> See, she's See, claiming it! <laughs> okay, maybe this guy goes right here. No, it goes right here. What do you think? How low is that? Now you're getting ready for the studio tour that's coming up mid-November. I'm pushing. <laughs> I think everybody is. Yeah, yeah. I have a counter on my uh, computer. I got 17 days. <laughs> oh gosh, I gotta work. <laughs> I don't know what it was. It came up on my computer yesterday and told me 18. I'm going, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to call that part done for now. Oh, and then here, let's get rid of this seam on the inside. And put the bottom on. When we'll put something on the bottom. Maybe this one. Okay. I love it because you can do just so many different things to each one of these cups. It's just kind of whatever your whim is at the moment. The, the drawers behind here are just absolutely full of um, lots of things that I can put on there. So right behind you, I think, maybe? No, here. So here are some of the things, you know, stamps and little pieces of plastic. I mean, just things. You just find things. And as you warned me ahead of time that these are all of your lettering in alphabetical order. And what did you say to me? Don't, Don't touch those. those. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, you can see they just barely fit up there. Yes. And um, it, it's that, um, I used to be in the restaurant business. Worked at Awful Annie's for years. I loved Annie. Annie was awesome. Um, and when you're in a lunch crunch, you need to just grab without having to really look. So I know the A's over there and the Z's over there, and I don't have to... I'm a little or I'm a little bit of organization freak. <laughs> you know, I think you would just about have to be, otherwise you'd spend most of your time just looking for things. Well, you know, people actually say to me sometimes, it's like, wow, you're an artist. How come you're so neat? <sighs> no, because they think artists are all kind of sloppy people, you know? I, I should have piles everywhere. Mm. I don't know. Maybe our work areas stay neat. I have to admit that I don't clean my house probably as often as I should. But no, 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 we're art people. We don't have to clean houses. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm told but, it's a rule. <laughs> yeah, but my studio is, is clean and neat and everything is where it needs to be. I, I have to be able to find stuff yes. at work. Okay. So let's just make sure this edge is going to be comfortable when you 
Now what you're making here is more like a glass. You're not going to be making a cup out of this. Is that I correct? would use this as a cup. Okay. A small cup. I have different sizes. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make sure that it's round. Now how do you make then the handle for this? And is it something that goes on at this point? No. If I was making like a coffee mug like yes. this one. So then um, this part uh, would be put aside, kept damp in about a little bit harder than this, mm -hmm. so I can attach that handle. And then these are pulled with another separate piece of clay. So I pull the handle and then um, let that dry a bit and then attach them later. So that would usually be done tomorrow morning I or see. later this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So no coffee mugs today. Okay. So are we done with this one then? I think this one's done. I'm not liking this little nooky place right here, but... Well, that's just Lucinda's cup. <gasps> okay, I think we have a... <laughs> so it has a, has a owner here, already. I, I need to put my <laughs> initials down here somewhere. <laughs> well, see this sign? This means Lucinda's okay, cup. Okay, got it. Okay. okay. The one with the smashed mouth. There we go. <laughs> okay, this bit's on the shelf to dry. <laughs> All right. Now you are going to show the different stages that we're going through before oh, we go sure. into the kiln. Okay. And I think you so, have some of those behind us. Yeah. Oh, sorry about my back. So this plate, these are three plates that I'm making. Uh, my daughter wants a set of dishes. So this plate is what we call greenware. And you can see um, this is the clay when it's damp, but mm -hmm. when it just dries, this is air dried. Um, then this is called greenware. It's very fragile. At this point, breaks really easy. I could snap this just very easily. Okay. So now that we're finished with this, this is where you said you do put it over on your shelves for it to dry. Right. So then it it'll become this. This, mm -hmm. right. And when it's this, and it's no longer got the moisture, the moisture has evaporated from it, mm -hmm. then I'll put it in the kiln and biscuit. So this hear it yes oh so this has been fired to mm, let's say 1900 degrees it might be 1946 mm -hmm. I don't remember it's called bisque it's the first firing it makes it hard it makes it um, not totally um, impervious to water or vitrified but um, so it's handleable I can handle it now and decorate it easily mm -hmm. right okay so then this one my daughter wants plain white. She's a foodie, so she needs just plain plates, Mom. So this one has glaze on it. Glaze is liquid glass, mm -hmm. and so it's put on over that. So this is just a clear glaze. So you can, this is called a vanilla clay, and you can tell that once I put that clear on it, it does kind of look like vanilla ice yes. cream. Yeah. And so this will be really the next to last. Is there a firing after this pro process? You could. if you, um, you know how your mom's dishes maybe had gold or silver on them? Yeah. That's called overglaze. Gotcha. So okay. I use underglaze. So I'm going to put some color on here with a, a liquid colored clay mm -hmm. that I can show you over at the decorating station. And then I'm going to put the glaze over that. So it's underglaze, glaze, and then overglaze is that silver and gold and decals and all that other cool stuff. All right, so the next stage that we are, we are going to, this has been set aside, and we've now have our, our bisque. Or Should we put it in the kiln? Yes, that's where I was going. Let's open the kiln. Okay. You want, you want to bring that cup and I'll open? Okay. Perfect. So this is the kiln. This is my kiln. Well, let me put this mm -hmm. aside, and I'll help you open this up. Great. It's heavy. So how do I do this? So if you just lift here, and then there's a little notch you can cut. It'll just fall Got right Got it. There. OK. Awesome. So there we go. So this kiln is half loaded. And then the stuff I'll make today will finish that up. So we can just push the, put, well, Actually, I think I'm going to put some low stuff in there, and then I'll put another shelf in, and I'll, I'll put some taller stuff later. So you're basically stacking several shelves as you're building up. Yeah. What supports the one shelf to the next set shelf? Okay, so the shelves are stacked with kiln furniture, okay. and the kiln furniture comes in all kinds of sizes. You could use bricks. Bricks mm -hmm. are made out of clay, right? So anything that's clay that's already fired, 
isn't going to shrink anymore. So the shelves are made out of clay, the kiln furniture is made out of clay. So you get a, quite a lot inside your kiln. Oh yeah, yeah, and like a dishwasher for me, I don't want to fire this thing empty. Now that's interesting because I would have assumed that you would have to always put like things together in the kiln, but you have all different sizes in here as well. So they all get the first stage at the same temperature? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. it's, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not the size of it, it's the clay going to a certain temperature. I don't care if it's this big or this big. It still has to it reach still a certain has temperature. to reach a certain temperature. Uh, all right, so understand. it's like your oven can. I don't know. See, That's I don't bake much. Can you put cookies and cake in? They both go at three fifty. No. No. Okay, never mind. Unless you have a confection oven. I don't. Maybe a kiln's like a confection Maybe. oven. Maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, does it blow any type of the air around this, or is it just? heat that's in it. This is an electric kiln, so the heat comes out of these electric that's coils that are in the side. Here. Yeah, and so it just radiates heat. A gas kiln um, has a blower on it and they actually blow in the flame, um, especially when you're trying to get up. There's mm -hmm. also wood fire kilns. and. So now something else I found really interesting about this because I assumed that like when you bake a cake you put it in the oven at 350 and then you have to bake it at that temperature for a certain period of time. But that's not how this works. No, a kiln, um, you have to start clay out cold, mm -hmm. take it to temperature and then bring it back down before you take the clay back out. So um, there are actually ancient cultures in um, Europe where they found all their clay things were exploded and after a while they decided they must have been doing it on purpose because hmm. cultures before them knew that you had to warm clay slowly. Um, so clay, the chemical formula for clay is alumina, silica, I can't tell you what alumina is, but silica is like windows, right, mm -hmm. glass, and water. So there's water in there that evaporates, but there's water that's in this stage chemically being driven away. I see. So then the clay becomes what we call vitrified um, when it gets to the maturity of the clay, which then it becomes really like stone. So it'll last forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, which is why we have things from Egypt and older that are clay. Some of the oldest things you'll find in museums are clay. Now, when you do this, I assume you how hot does it get inside of here? What temperature are we going for? This temperature is bisque. So I have a little chart over here. Bisque is 1,946 degrees. So that's just to get it hot enough. So I used to tell the kids at school, you know how you have an oven at home? And we talk about helping cooking and everything. Okay, your oven at home gets to 500. My oven gets over 2,000. Yeah. So to get to a glaze temperature, my glaze is mid-range, so I'm only going to go to 2,199. But those high fire people, they're going to 2,300. Wow. For the little tiles that are on the spaceships that actually go to outer space, mm -hmm. they go even hotter. That clay is uh, gets even more vitrified. I never even realized they were clay. Yes. Oh, and the insulation in rocket ship where the fire comes off, what's that called? Okay, where the <laughs> insulation for the um, I'm an flame, artist, I'm not a scientist. I don't either. <laughs> That's made out of clay too, that spun clay. It, so it looks like fiberglass, but it's uh -huh. actually made out of clay. I never even knew that. That's fascinating. All right, so now we close up the, the kiln when you're ready to fire it up. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Now, how about the temperature out here? Is it pretty warmer than around the kiln? Or does it all like keep this inside? You know, this is a, pr the, it's insulated pretty mm -hmm. well, but it's still, you know, if you touched it, it's hot. It is it. So, you know, you want to keep it a little bit away from everything. So it has to go up to the temperature and then it comes down. Right. So it gets real warm in here when, when I'm working. Some people actually put their kiln in a separate shed. I don't have one of those yet. <laughs> ah, next Maybe year. Maybe that's coming. <laughs> All right, so now we've finished with this, and this is your first firing that you do. Right. So and you've come, we've now got that product. Yeah. And where do we go next? When this comes out, we take it over here, and we're going to decorate. All right, let's go see how that works. Okay. So now we're going to the decorative area. Right. And this is where you do your painting and your glazing, and this is where you bring out all that detail in your cups. And yeah. Everything. 
Yeah, so I put the texture on and we're going to do it under glaze. So you don't want to put paint in a kiln because that would actually bubble oh, up. Okay. So this is actually liquid colored clay. So it's clay and water and some mineral or mm -hmm. chemical or something for the, um, for the color. And you have a lot of different colors already made up there. Yeah, I actually am buying commercial um, underglazes for the most part, though I did buy this little bit right here. Look, it's in Japanese. <laughs> so oh, I love the color too. That I know, beautiful. I'm really hoping it works. So now what do you mix this with? Just I'm going to mix it with water. Okay. Um, it's in Japanese, so I can't really tell. <laughs> I'm going to try it though. So because, remember how the clay was one color before we fired it? and then another color after we fired it. Yes. So this is not necessarily going to come out this color. Do you know what color is going to come out yet? No. Oh. But I'm hoping. So Test! It, it could be anywhere from something lighter to something darker. Um, I'm, I personally am having problems with getting lavenders and purples in um, the temperature that I fire to mid-range, mm -hmm. cone 5. So I'm hoping that this will come out similar to this color at cone 5. But mm -hmm. a lot of my lavenders are coming out blue. So if you do want it a darker color, does it have to be a higher temperature? Is that what you're no, about? It's oh, okay. just, no, it's just middle. Like this is black. Okay. It's yes. going to come out black. Okay. You know. And so um, the maroons come out. It, um, a lot of the underglazes that I'm using are actually formulated to fire at a different temperature. So I'm, I'm kind of playing. Well, you know what? This just means that you get a lot of surprises coming out of the can. There you go. It's either Christmas or Halloween. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go through this process. And you do have some that are in various stages here. Yeah. Um, and so why don't you take, walk us through okay. this process, which okay. is the underglaze. Right. So um, I'm simply painting on some color where I had done that impression. And I have a skull mug here. This actually does have a handle that has similar designs than we had before. Mm -hmm. So all I'm going to do is add these last two colors. So this is a maroon color I made up by mixing. Um, Underglazes are similar to paint in that I can make my own colors by combining colors. Okay. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, you know, the fire is going to do what it's going to do. So you just dab it within the area that you have actually made the impressions. Yeah, because I'm going to wash away a lot of this, so I don't want to waste too much. Now, when you wash it away, because this is all dry, do you do that process after it's dry? You know, you're going to watch this dry okay. as we speak, because this is clay, and this is clay, and the clay that I'm painting on the cup is actually still porous, mm -hmm. and so it's sucking up that water really fast. So, I can almost, I will do this immediately, practically. It's just hard for me to imagine that you get the product that you do by going through this process. So it's really interesting to see this. I would never imagine that this is how it's done. Huh. Okay. So the black is a little wet. So why don't we walk? I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Okay. And then I will come back and put a color on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, so let's grab, let's grab this one. So... So that's you're just using a wet okay, sponge. I can't show you this one. That's a cussing cup. We're not going to do that one on the line. Okay. Okay. So let's go on this one. And I'm just going to take a, a wet sponge. And with a, a, it's a commercial sponge, so it's nice and flat. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take the color off of the surface of the clay. Well, so that just comes right off. Yeah. And it's because you're not rubbing down within the little grooves that it's right. not coming so out Right, so I'm taking the flat sponge and rubbing off the mm -hmm. flat surface.
And now we can see what this says. And there you go. Let's get the bottom. Oh, I like the way you did this just on the edge there. There you go. So, these are um, a little Japanese cloud. So, and then, well, let's just hold it for a little bit, because okay. this is really interesting. So now we just have, where, like I said, you can see that it's on here and it says breathe. Breathe. And then look, so something where we saw That's the, hmm. something where we saw the, just paint over it now has a very defined lines in it. Very interesting. There you go. And then we'll put a color on the inside. Oh, you're going to put a color on the inside of this one? You can do that. Okay. Because I'm really interested to see how you do that. Because my inclination would be to just go pour a whole bunch of it in and then pour oh. it out. <laughs> well, you could do that, but I'm going to use a fan brush. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and choose a color. How about gold? Pink would be nice. Like sunsets. How about pink? Is that ready? Okay, maybe not. Go. So how do you know they're not ready? Uh, what? Listen. It's oh, dry. It's dry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to add water in it. So, um... So you just paint the inside? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just not a pouring method. You could. It would be very wasteful, I think. Well, when I glaze, I actually pour. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Because I'm not... Can she talk and paint at the same time? No. So after you right, do right, this right. particular process, what comes next? Because are we going to do another firing? Yep. So this is underglazed, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this one aside. And then I would glaze it. I would take the clear glaze mm -hmm. and I would cover it. Um, there are people who say you should fire in between. I never have and I've always been successful. Mm -hmm. So I just put glaze over that. Then I put it back in the kiln and it'll come, up, um, come out like those cups you saw in the beginning. Which had that nice gloss to them. Yeah, you want that sheen so that it's easier to clean. Um, some people think the shine is prettier, but it, it just it makes it so it's not porous anymore, so you can use it for food. Mm -hmm. So everything I do is food safe. You can put it in the microwave. Now, you had said that there's sometimes you can get it's either Christmas or it's Halloween. <laughs> so if it ends up being Halloween, what do you end up doing with it? Um, well, I have another station over on the other side of the studio for mosaics. So okay. you can always smash it, right? And, and then you and then you can use it. it. For, yeah, again. I have a, a bird bath that needs to be mosaic. <laughs> so again, nothing goes to waste. Let's try not to waste stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, Barbara Ann, you know this has been, <clears throat> excuse me, quite an experience. I really thank you so very much. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for coming to visit. You know, this is the type of experience that the Placer Arts hopes that you can have by going on the Placer Arts Studio Tour. It gives you an opportunity to meet the artist, to talk about their mediums that they work in, the clay that they work with, and also get to see their studio. It really is an opportunity. We certainly thank you for tuning in, and I hope that you will tune in again, and I hope to see you on the tour.